By the power of Grayskull, I'm Lux. And for the honor of Grayskull, I'm Ember. Yes, we did that again. Because we can. And this is our thoughts on She-Ra and the Princesses of Power, Season 1, Episodes 3 and 4. I must say that title's a bit more of a mouthful than the original. Yeah, the original was one word. But we're trying not to make it all about She-Ra, apparently. Because seriously, in the original, it was She-Ra and everybody else. Though I, I do like how we had an episode with her dealing with how to turn her powers on and off. And in the second episode, she kind of turns it on and off with no problem. So that's kind of a showing of progression. Though, speaking of progression, we haven't really had any progression from we're not friends to friends. It's just we're not friends, friends. It basically just kind of happened apparently off screen. Apparently. And it doesn't seem like there's been much time since She-Ra Adora has arrived. It's, it feels like it's been like two days. Well, we don't know how long it took them to get back from Thamor. So there could have been some bonding there that we didn't see. Because, I mean, Glimmer was riding the horse and Adora was holding the reins. That's a lot of trust. Because the person holding the reins controls the horse. Also, I think she hasn't figured out how to turn off those transformations yet. Because I have a feeling Swift Wind is still transformed and riding around going, I have wings. What's up with this? It's nice that they show a creature suddenly having wings and having no clue what to do with them. Also, I'm thinking I'm a bit of a fan of Swift Wind actually not talking. At least not in normal human tongue. He still seems to have an attitude. Well, he had an attitude even when he was horsey. Uh -huh. So what do you think of the new version of modern... Modern Raz? <laughs> Madam Raz. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Raz. Well, Madam Raz was always very scattered. And Madam Raz is obviously a princess by the new canon's vernacular because minor magics. Also very old because... Mara apparently also carried the sword of She-Ra. Is Mara a name from the original series? Not one that I recall. Hmm. That's not saying much. I I'm almost thinking that Madame Raz was part of the original princesses that we're getting backstory on in these two episodes, because apparently their parents fought and lost hard. Mm-hmm. So everybody gave up. That, or there was resentment after, and they all went, Yeah, I don't like you anymore. I'm going to go in my own kingdom and pout for a while. So now we're working to undo that with a new generation of princesses and possibly some older princesses because it doesn't have to just be the young ones. I also like the, yeah, the, those two over there, we have no idea what they do. <laughs> Spinda? Spinda? Uh, can't say the name right now. <laughs> so who were the two princesses? Are you wanting me to keep track of the princesses? I was busy looking for Luki. You mean the guy in the fan? Yes. Well, you found him. Yes. Apparently he was only in that one episode unless like he's in the other episodes and we haven't found him so far. Which is possible. Also a stuffed animal for Cal. And Imp is a confirmed character because he was in Hordak's lap. Mm-hmm. Who is this Imp? Uh, Luki's counterpart. Ah. Basically, evil talking pet. Gotcha. And what do you think about the changes so far? Also, I love Hordak's voice. That voice actor really does a good job of, yeah, I'm the big boss. You better not mess with me. I'd like to point out that I am in control. I know that you're doing stuff I told you not to. And I can take away everything you have. Because I'm thinking Shadow Weaver is also technically a princess. Because it was kind of pointed out in this episode that princesses get their power from somewhere. And Shadow Weaver went back to that stone to recharge because we saw her threatening Catra and then suddenly the stone in her forehead acting up and her withdrawing. I also love Catra. Like, see this badge? <laughs> yeah, you know, this one right here. The one that says I'm above you. <laughs> Yeah, kind of interesting. I wonder what Hordak's up to. Hmm. 
And what Shadow Weaver knows or thinks she knows about Adora that she has kept from Hordak. Because Hordak obviously does not see it Shadow Weaver's way. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> because um, I, I think Shadow Weaver... Ooh, idea, and it's probably obvious. Shadow Weaver was a princess. As in one of the original ones that they were referring to. <laughs> and she kidnapped Adora. Well, it's pretty much a given that she kidnapped Adora. The details of that are where we're still a bit sketchy because the little flashback pieces are still showing what looks like a ship crashing, which is very Superman ending up on Earth. Lots of interesting stuff. It also reminds me, thank you, commenter from last time. We'll keep our eye out for that episode. Yes. But so far, we're still enjoying these episodes because I like what they're doing. There's like some rushing, like I said about the whole not friends, friends. That part is very rushed because they're not really giving us a sense of time passing off screen. And they're not doing the one thing that usually helps with this. It's a phrase called show, don't tell. They're telling us right now that they're friends. Show us that they're friends. They're doing stuff together, yes. They're having kind of a pillow fight thing, yes. But you didn't show us them becoming friends. You told us that they became friends. It would have been better to show us that they became friends. Like, give us an episode where they were writing back and Shira did something for them, or they did something for Shira, or even just a little montage of the trip back. Because the amount of time we saw them together in the first two episodes was enough for some respect and a measure of trust. Friendship's different. It takes time to build. Because you can pretty much instantly respect someone for the abilities that they have or something that they've done. Oh, you just saved a child from that burning building. I totally respect you. Have a long conversation. Wow, you are a jerk, but I still respect you. Like you can respect your enemies. Because, you know, like, dude, I hate your guts, man. But you've, yeah. That was, that was a brilliant move there. Seriously. Seriously. You shouldn't fear things. You should respect them because it gives you more power over that. If you fear something, you're more likely to make a mistake when making a decision regarding that thing. And because that, like, totally out of nowhere, really, Steve Irwin respected crocodiles. He didn't fear them. This is why he got along with them. Though I think he got a little... I think something else bit him in the end. Yes, yes. And everyone makes the joke of all the crocodiles were like, Oh, man! But yeah, so far the animation is also maintaining. We're not having that post-premiere drop-off that you get so often with pilots, where all the money goes into the pilot, and then you get the downgrade. Also, they're not using her transformation too much. And what I mean by that is they're not trying to fill time with the transformation sequence. They're not trying to save on animation by plugging in the transformation sequence at every opportunity. Though, going back, another thing on showing the passage of time, how does Katra know that She-Ra has swift wind? Because she very clearly had a picture of She-Ra riding Swiftwind on her locker that she was trying to hide from Shadow Weaver. I almost read that that was Adora's locker? But still, it was a picture of She-Ra on Swiftwind. So uh, no. where did that come from? It was a picture of Adora on Swiftwind. Based on how things are going, I think Adora drew that. Possibly. But Catra was trying to hide it from Shadow Weaver. Probably because she saw Adora on there at the multicolored thing and went, hmm, probably nothing to show her. At least that's my guess so far. Also, maybe she saw reports or something. Possible, because She-Ra and Swiftwind were definitely together when She-Ra rescued Swiftwind. And I don't know if we talked about it in the last one, what do you think of the transformation sequence itself? It feels very Sailor Moon because you have a lot of the silhouette and the close-ups and the flash. Though I do like the part where she has her hands free long enough to do that nice punch into her hand. 
and then grab the sword back. To get the gauntlets. Mm -hmm. Overall, I'm liking the design. And I do see like the issues some people have with it because it's not overly feminine. It's actually very gender neutral. Someone would almost say slightly masculine. That I'm like, that's okay for what we're going for here with this Shira. Also, the type of armor that 80s Shira had is basically the type that kills you. Because armor that um, encases the girls like that draws a sword straight to the center of your chest. And she may actually still have that stuff underneath the outfit. Because a proper outfit would probably push those in and be like a sports bra. Because you need freedom of movement. And also think about growing up in the fright zone in a military environment. Strictly re controlled rations, a great deal of physical activity. A lot of females who are athletic from a very young age tend to be less uh, curvy. Or at least not much in the chest area. And they also have a tendency to have puberty later in life because puberty has, is kind of like connected to, you've reached this weight. Okay, I can turn on the hormones now. Because this means that there is enough calories around you to support the possibility of additional life exactly so what do you think about the story so far other than being a little rushed it's very good catra is continuing to stay conflicted adora less so i mean she's still conflicted with i gave up everything i don't know what to do i don't know how to help i want to help but we really saw Catra break down in episode 3. She's devastated by Adora's apparent betrayal, yet she still wants to defend her. So if they're going to have to continue to cross swords, it's going to be very difficult. Though I find it kind of interesting that we're keeping some of the secret identity thing kind of going on. It's like used sparingly and it's only for minor things and either there's a reveal or we push it off till later. Like how she, when she first came to the village, and she was Shira, and then she transformed down, everyone was like, hey, where did Shira go? Oh, the way that village was done was just slightly rubbed me the wrong way. It was just, uh, to go back to Avatar, when they ran into the troop, when they were going into the caves. Ah, don't react to what I'm about to tell you, but I think that boy's the Avatar. Stuck. Yeah. So it was it was very that, which of course is based on something in the real world relating to a decade that begins with the number six. <laughs> oh, you mean the stereotypical hippie? Yes. I, I did that by moving my hand across the sky in a pretend rainbow. <laughs> and I'm like Really, you could have done something better with, you know, the people who are focused on growing plants. Flower power. Can yeah. I punch things with flowers? Absolutely. I'm totally in! <laughs> uh, she's going to be an interesting character. But there was so... I Seriously, I wish they could have gone a different direction with that kingdom. They could have still been very peaceful without going that route. Hmm. What would be your suggestions? Well, if the big thing is flowers, then everyone should be focused on growing and maintaining things. And instead of this, we'll focus on the positive no matter what, should be a little more realism of our beautiful plants are dying. Because if the plants are important in this kingdom, then there should be some reaction to that. Not just a, oh, we're not going to dwell on that. Mm. Well, it really depends on your philosophy, too. If they really do have this belief system and they're kind of raised with it, they may be the whole, just slough it off, it's okay. Which is totally a thing, but combined with the overall portrayal... And, yeah, you, you could have still had the whole, you know, focus on the positive, slough it off. But let's show some struggle with that. You know, have some of the people in the village 
struggling to maintain that positivity. Well, we did see a little bit of that from Flower. It started with it was about it was it was, it was a name that had to deal with flowers. But it was just a tiny bit, and with how overdone everything else was. Hmm. And, and I also like to reiterate again that Bo is like Sokka. And going back to the rush thing, I almost feel like maybe when the initial concept of this was written down, they were planning for a 26-episode season, and Netflix said 13. And instead of slowing it down, they decided to cram everything in. Because I'm thinking by the end of the 13, we're going to have the full Princess Alliance, with the exception of Catra. The full Princess Alliance, with the exception of Catra. We won't have Catra. We the Rebellion. You, you remember what side you're on, right? Yeah, but I'm, isn't Catra bad guy? Yeah. Like I said, we'll have the whole Princess Alliance except for Catra. So Catra's a princess? Trust me. Okay. Just checking. That's what I was confused on. That, that was like, Catra. And do you remember our last episode? When I talked about the original 80s Catra, she's magic. Okay, okay. Like, I'm just, you know, I'm caught up now. I got it. I'm on page 13. Why is everybody always on 26? Because the rest of us read faster. <laughs> also, since we stepped away, let's go back to Bo. In addition to totally being Sokka, to draw a parallel with another series i can say series because there's two books even though i only read the first one princess academy he could be a very good candidate for basil because he's stuck with all the girls he's in the princess group but he's not actually a princess oh you're talking about the emma larson book series yes hmm 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 well i i have read the sequel book so i'm like Hmm, is that an apt? Hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I wonder if he's going to have any more books. I mean, Larson, that is. Because I did enjoy his first two books, and he's gotten, he got a lot better in the second one. The second one read a lot less like, I took this script idea I had and turned it into a book. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy that first book. I'm just saying I saw the flaws in it. Well, you know, with visual media, we tend to say show, don't tell. Mm-hmm. In print media, you kind of have to tell us, but in a way that you're not actually telling us. Yeah. He, you can't say, he's angry because of this. You can say, he showed anger and stuff like that without having to reiterate that it was because of this. What's the next thing you'd like to go over? Uh, Glimmer's little recharging station there. I'm like, that, that was nice. Because mm. we didn't touch on that. We just touched on... Princesses have power sources. Lucky Shira, hers is portable. Though that reminds me of something. Is it just because she couldn't transform because of how she was thinking? Or did the sword actually need some recharge time? The sword could have needed some recharge time. We don't know how self-aware the sword might be. The sword might recognize that there's no threat. What, what are you doing? There's no threat. As opposed to Glimmer's ability, which is completely under her control. She can choose to use or not to use. Hmm. And going back to the whole recharge station, specifically the scene around it, I like how the mom comes right up and is like like yelling at her and stuff like that. And then Glimmer starts to pass out and the mother goes, shoot. Fix this. You're awake. Feeling better. Good. Now, where were we? <laughs> Uh, I also, going back to that particular episode, I also like the grand entrance of She-Ra when Glimmer was basically getting a nice talk down in the throne room. I like that entrance. That was a good entrance. Also, I do like how there are still some people who are, like, eyeing Adora. Very much so. Because, you know, they've given us indications that she hasn't been there very long. Because the whole thing with the bedroom and the bed and them coming in to sleep over... So, you know, that points to what we're seeing having taken place with that very little off-screen time. It feels like it's been, like, 
three or four day story time, which is about how many episodes we've watched. So, which isn't really enough time for everything that's happened to have happened. So, yeah, I'm thinking, like I said, during the planning stages, this was originally plotted out for a 26 episode run, and then they went actually 13. So feeling rushed and all they had to do was not call it She-Ra and then the internet wouldn't have exploded. Other than that, it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm definitely enjoying it myself. I, I like how they're handling certain things and how they're working their story up and just the voice actors for both Hordak and Shadow Weaver. I like both of them. They're doing an excellent job. Shadow Weaver's menacing without being, I am pretending to be menacing. It, it's just the tone and the threatening tone. And there's a lot of in the words, not the words themselves, but the tones associated with the words. It's giving you the, ooh. Yeah. So there's a good example of show don't tell that's using words because the menace is clear from the tone. It doesn't matter what's being said. The tone is conveying it. Also, they're doing, at least with certain characters, they're doing a nice job of body language. Like when Ketra's confident, she does a whole chest out thing, and she's also has a tendency to be like up on her toes a little bit. Because that's where her energy is. It's in the front of her feet. Mm-hmm. Because cat. But when she's unsure about something or she's scared, she does exactly what a cat does. Like she... Puts her, grounds herself, hunches down a little bit, depending on the threads, either cower or I'm going to pounce. And I feel sorry for that one kid in the background in the horde. Yeah, poor Kyle. Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> also, how menacing Shadow Weaver is based on her body posture and when she's powerful, when she's not powerful. The amount of shadows... It'll be interesting to see if her uh, shadow seekers can wind their way through the Whispering Wood and find Adora and Bright Moon. And apparently the Whispering Woods are a problem for Hordak's army because he's like, we're trying to destroy it to get it out of the way so we can actually get there. But it doesn't sound like it's the totally straightforward version from the 80s where the woods themselves know, oh, these are Horde soldiers. We'll just remaze. Oh, these are rebel fighters. Uh, hey, pass clear. No, no, the pass right there. Go on. Go, go. Shoo, shoo, be on your way. You stop. You go. <laughs> <laughs> so what were your favorite parts of this of these two episodes? Madam Raz. Yeah, Madam, Madam Raz was good. <laughs> I can't hear you without my glasses. She's wearing her glasses. Also, how does that help her hearing? <laughs> also, a, a nice thing to show Adora the stars and stuff like that, because apparently you can't see the stars now. You know, it's like, yeah. There, there's massive cloud cover and stuff that's blocking out the sky a lot. And how Madame Raz just climbed up that, I'm like, holy smokes! Yeah, she's in better shape than you think she is. Yeah, like, you don't even have any batteries in your basket. Get along, get along! <laughs> yeah, and then you have to wonder how old she really is if she knew the Mara that was She-Ra. And everything that the Queen and Princess Flora said makes it sound like she hasn't been seen in forever. Like pre-Princess Alliance forever. Sounds like it's been a while. I almost want to say like I heard the classic thousand year thing, but it's probably a hundred. Because we're looking in hundred increments in this one because it sounds like it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Not a really long while, but like, yeah, a couple hundred years ago this happened. Can't wait to hear more info. Right along with uh, looking up the translation for those runes. I'm sorry, I, ha I haven't tracked down that sheet for you. <laughs> well, you need to track it down and you need to post it with these videos. I bet you it's on the official Sierra website because I bet you that's what my link went to. So yeah, it won't be that hard. DreamWorks, Shira. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Just need to sit down and do that along with editing and drawing and editing and drawing and editing. And, you know, real life. Like, mm -hmm. work and chores and adulting. Oh, yes, adulting. The most fun thing ever. Uh, it can be. Yes, yes, it can be. It, it has its ups, it has its downs, and it has its... Where did my hair go? Why is it all over the floor? 
Why, why is there hair in my hands? Oh my god, I pulled my hair out. I'm Dr. Scratch and Sniff. Uh, name the series in the comments down below. You know, if possible, name the episodes. Oh, great. Now I have to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> Were you actually going to say the cartoon? I'm mean, thinking of just leaving that. I was like, was that the first episode? <laughs> uh. Well, it was definitely the first interaction between those sets of characters. Definitely. Let's see. Any more story points you want to go over? Or should we tell people that we like the series and we'll continue watching it? Also, Adora's infiltration of the Horde camp. And interesting how her password was that far out of date. Because that's more of them trying to show she's been gone a long time. But wouldn't she know how often the passwords update? Or is that just the password she was given when she was made Force Captain? And it wasn't that long since she was made Force Captain, so how could that passcode be months old? Hmm. So, yeah, none of that works. Yeah, that's an interesting cat, because, like, they're trying to imply time and stuff like that, but the way the pacing of the series is going, it feels like day one, day two, day three, day four. <laughs> Though I think the first episode was a couple of days. Yes, and there was that conveyance of time. But everything basically from the end of episode two forward has felt like it's been back to back to back. I'm thinking of any other questions I'd like to ask you about comparisons and stuff like that. Man and Raz was fun. I'm just doing a mental check on like, what do I remember Man and Raz looking like? Oh, yeah. <laughs> She had the hat. She was kind of an orco. She was the orco equivalent. That's the thing. Everyone in She-Ra had a He-Man equivalent. They basically just took He-Man and went gender swap. So, wrap things up mm -hmm. with a pretty little bow. This has been our thoughts on She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Season 1, Episodes 3 and 4. Oh, look! Another outro. Aren't you glad? It means you've made it to the end of the podcast. Congratulations. And your reward is... Shilling. <laughs> I'm going to shill my stuff to you. Congratulations. You have won me talking about my stuff. Which is art. Links down below. Also, there's a Patreon and stuff like that, which I'll get to in just a moment. But first, please subscribe. Or if you don't feel like subscribing, we do have other videos you can watch. Please stay around. There's playlists, there's more on Shira, like the other two episodes, and there's also our other channel called Ember's Reading Room, and there's books on Shira there. Go, enjoy, then come back, because I have more to tell you. Like the Patreon stuff I mentioned, also I do commissions. Commissions are where you tell me an image you'd like, I tell you a price for which I will draw that image for you, and then you give me the money and I give you the drawing after a process of me drawing it for you. Prices on that will vary. Also links down below. And Patreon, as I've mentioned before, it's a dollar a month at the base level that gets you the chance to vote on polls that you can help suggest ideas for. Also, there's coffee. No, not coffee. C come, come back here. K-O-F-I the site where you can donate a little bit of money towards me and that will help me continue to do stuff like this, like the drawings and talking. Yes, I do talk. A lot. It's now time for Ember. How am I supposed to top that? <laughs> I didn't even think that was that good. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We appreciate all of the support that we receive in the form of views, likes, comments, dialogues, suggestions, and of course, financially as well. But all of it is truly appreciated. Thank you to all of our supporters, subscribers, etc. in whatever form you choose to grace us with your presence.